This is the uh, fifth in a series of videos on discrete functions, and this one is called Pascal's Triangle. So, um, what I'd like you to do, please, before we get into the course pack page, is just to grab a piece of paper. It doesn't have to have lines. It could just be like this. We're going to draw a triangle. Um, so, go pause the video, please, and go grab a piece of paper and come right back. Okay, so Pascal's triangle is an interesting triangle. Um, it's not a triangle like this, it's a triangle of numbers, like a sequence, but without the commas. And the way we do it is like this, so please draw this with me. So title your page Pascal's Triangle and draw this with me. So it's a, it's a number one, and below the number one are uh, two other ones like this, kind of diagonal, one on each side, so one and one, one. And the next line looks like this. It starts with a 1. And the next uh, term is going to sit here, so diagonally from these two, so kind of below that one. And what we do is we add the two numbers that are above it, and we write the sum just below. And this right on the right-hand side is a 1. Okay, so third, uh, so this is, uh, next line is starts with a 1. And now we add these two to get three. We add these two to get three. And on the end is a one. Okay, so next line is a one. All right, is it going to be one, four, 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 one? A bunch of fours? Okay, not exactly. We're still going to add these two and you get a four. But now when you add these two, you get a six. Add these two, you get a four. And there's a one. Let's do one more row. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay, just for fun, let's do one last row. 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. And this is Pascal's triangle. It's a very interesting triangle. It has a lot of patterns that are used in mathematics. Um, and in class, I'm going to show you a bunch of the different patterns and uh, even take you to a website where if you're interested in this, you can find patterns. Um, just by looking at it, what do you notice? Just some very simple ones. You notice all these ones here. You notice this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down the diagonal. All the counting numbers, the natural numbers are down the diagonal. These ones, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, are called triangular numbers. You'll learn about them in some of the exercises. Um, really cool thing, you can actually find Fibonacci here. Seriously. So I'll just show you. Here's um, if I draw a diagonal that looks like this, I get 1. If I draw another diagonal parallel to it, I get um, the sum of these two is 2. So uh, let me just write um, the sum 1. And uh, sorry, I missed the diagonal, so here's another one. So 1 and 1, and then the sum of the other diagonal is 2. I'll draw another diagonal. The sum is 3 draw another diagonal, the sum is 5, uh, another diagonal right here, the sum is 8, look at that, it's Fibonacci, um, here's our 13, okay, so lots, lots of cool things. So now we turn to the cor course pack page called Pascal's Triangle, so here it is, okay. And um, it gives you some history about Pascal, and actually the triangle may not have been discovered by the mathematician Pascal. It may have been discovered in China prior to that. Um, so you can read this. And here's the triangle. And I just wanted to talk about how to label the terms of the triangle. So remember with sequences, we label things um, T1, T2, T3, term 1, term 2, term 3. Because the triangle has rows and columns, um, it's not enough to call them T1, T2, T3. We have to say which row um, the term is in and uh, which position in the row. So what we do, we name the rows. Uh, we, we, we number the rows starting at zero. So this is row zero. This is row one, row two, row three, row four, row five. And then within each row, the position of the term starts, we start counting at zero. So this is term zero in row one. Um, otherwise, it's right, term zero in row zero, so that we call that T zero zero. And in row one, this is term zero and this is term one. 
so it's T10 and T11. Okay, let's just skip ahead to row 5. In row 5, this is term 0, term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5. So they're named uh, T50, T51, T52, T53, T54, T55. There is a little mistake here in the paper. We're going to need to change this. This is a T40. Okay, so that's how we name them. Um, so just a little bit of practice using the triangle. Example 1 says the first five terms in row 13 of Pascal's triangle are 1, 3, 78, 286, and 715. Determine the first five terms in row 14. So watch this. Row 13 is, they said, 1, 13, 78, 286, 715. So what's row 14? Okay, well, remember the patterns. Row 14 sits right below row 13. Every row starts with a 1. And so now we have to add these two, you get 14. And then we add these two, you get 91. And then you add these two, um, I'm going to use the calculator. terms of row 14. Okay, uh, let's do example two. Shown below our portion of Pascal's triangle. Fill in the missing numbers. See if you can do this. I'll start you off. Um, you need to fill in these empty spaces here. So remember that every two numbers will add to the number below them. So the only thing really is to start with, well actually you can start anywhere, but this is probably an easy one enough to start with. Oh, nope, this one's even easier. 20 plus 15. And then what would go there if they must add to 21? So I'm going to pause the video at this point. Please try to complete A and B and come back and check your solution with me. Okay, so this is what I got. Okay, And the order in which you write them in makes a difference. So this is what I got for the first one. For the second one, I started with the 210, got that first and then I could get the 120 as 330 minus 210. And then once I got that, I could also get this 462. So um, often it's just a matter of which is the right one to start with. Okay, so those are those. Um, example three, another cool thing, uh, cool pattern about Pascal's triangle. It says find the sums of the numbers in the f each of the first six rows of Pascal's triangle. Find the sums and list them in a table of values. So let's go up to the triangle and let's write the sum of each row. So for row 0, what's the sum? If you add them all up, you get 1. And for row 1, add them up, you get 2. And row 2, add them, you get 4. Row 3, you get 8. Row 4, you get 16. And row 5, 32. Very interesting. Um, notice what, what are those numbers? Do you recognize them? You should by now. They are the powers of 2. So 1 is 2 to the 0. <coughs> Excuse me. 2 is 2 to the 1. 4 is 2 to the 2. 8 is 2 to the 3. 16 is 2 to the 4. 32 is 2 to the 5. Sorry for the shadow. Um, still working out lighting here. So um, here we go. So those are, uh, so the sums of the rows uh, are powers of 2. So pretty cool. Let's go down to example three. Find the sums of the numbers. Okay, um, we did the table of values. So now predict the sum of the entries in row seven. Well, it looks like row seven will have, the sum will be two to the seven, which is 128. Okay, uh, question C says, determine the row number from Pascal's triangle if the row sum is 2048. Well, this means uh, we would have to know in general what is the sum of the rows, so I think we should do question D first. Determine a general rule for the sum of the terms in the nth row. Well, the sum of the terms of the nth row would be 2 to the n. So for question C, 2 to the n is equal to 2048. Oops, 2048. Can we solve that? Oh, I think we can. 
because 2048 is a power of 2, is 2 to the 11. So therefore, n is equal to 11. Therefore, um, in, in row 11. OK, and those are the, that's a little bit of practice with Pascal's triangle. Um, in class, I will do example 4, which is the one with the checkerboard on the next page. Um, but for now, this is all you need to know. Your next video to watch, you should also watch tonight, is uh, um, the binomial expansion using Pascal's triangle. So we're going to apply Pascal's triangle to some algebra, which um, yeah, it's one of the one of the things that's really fun about this triangle. Okay, um, I will share with you more patterns in class, and uh, thank you for watching. Please review this sheet, and uh, we'll see you in class. Thanks. Bye.